Okay, so uh, now we go into this topic, air quality modeling project or air quality modeling, and its relation. And this topic is very important for your project assignment. So uh, because you'll be given your assignment today, so I need to jump to this topic, and then after we finish this for the next class, then we can go back to the the next topic after radiative transfer. So uh, it seems that the, one of the uh, limitations of using this real software is that I can only do it every five minutes. So I will just record five minutes and stop, and then five minutes again, stop, and so on. So uh, this is coming from a training material that I created some years ago. And uh, I just extracted some slides from that training material for you uh, so that you can use it for your project and only some uh, slides of that training material is applicable to you. So just uh, uh, ignore the, like for example, topic two instead of topic one and so on. There might be some continuity problems, continuity issues of the numbering and also the, the page numbering and also the topic numbering. Okay, we start off this topic of air quality modeling by looking at the theory of air quality modeling and what we'll be, the air quality modeling that we'll be using is the most basic one, the Gaussian plume model. So these are the learning outcomes for this topic. By the end of this topic, the participants or the students will be able to explain the basic concept of the Gaussian plume model or the GPM. Maybe this is the first time you've heard of this, of this uh, concept. So by the end of this, you'll be able to explain what is the Gaussian plume model. Uh, and the second learning outcome is to discuss the basic parameters of air quality modeling, means the uh, important parameters of this of modeling using the Gaussian plume model. And number three, you'll be able to calculate air pollution concentration using Gaussian plume model. And we can use Gaussian plume model at the most basic just by hand calculation. So we'll maybe go through an example for you to calculate by hand um, using this Gaussian plum model or GPM. So uh, this is just my quote. So that's why I just put my name there. Uh, air quality modeling, from my perspective, requires three different skill sets. So that's why sometimes it can be quite uh, difficult because you need to have some engineering background. You also need to have meteorological background and some GIS the remote sensing and so on background. So um, air quality modeling is actually the application of all of the topics that you've learned so far. But again, we don't go too in depth into air quality modeling. We just use the most basic one. So to give you an idea of where all these things come together. So what is the Gaussian plume model? It is a simple but common and versatile model. Simple because you can use, you can use the model by hand. You can just uh, look at the equation and you just plug in the values and you can calculate the air pollution concentration using this Gaussian plume model. And it is the most common, means that it is applied to many different models. And these different models has its basic basis, this Gaussian plume model. The basics of the model, this adv more advanced model is the Gaussian plume model. So it's uh, applied everywhere in all, almost all models. And uh, because it is applied uh, in many models, it's also a versatile model because you can just use it anywhere. But in its most simplest form, you can use it by hand. And this model is modified and applied in more advanced, unsteady state model like CalPuff. So even the basis of this advanced model, CalPuff, uses this simple Gaussian plume model. Now this Gaussian plume model, the one that we're using, is a steady state model, means that it doesn't change with time. When I mention steady state, uh, it means that we don't concern ourselves with the changes with time. It just, um, throughout time, it will just have a single value or it will produce a single value only, which that means does not depend on time. It can predict the location of the highest concentration of air pollution. At least it can tell you, give you an idea of where the highest pollution, air pollu the highest concentration pollution would be. But uh, it cannot really predict when the lowest air quality would, could occur, the lowest or the highest air quality would occur because it just does not depend on time. We just know exactly where it can happen, but not exactly when. 
Now, this model is applied in many US EPA or United States Environmental Protection Agency regulatory models. When I mention regulatory model, models, means that it is a model recognized by the US government to be used for such practices or such uh, exercise to model air pollution. Um, some of the US EPA regulatory models include the airscreen model, which you'll be using, and the air mod model, which is a uh, airscreen uses a part of this air mod model. AirMod is more robust, AirScreen is just uh, the initial model to use before you run AirMod model. But we use AirScreen model, uh, the AirScreen, the, the main part of the AirScreen model is based off of AirMod, or it uses parts of the AirMod model. And Malaysia also recognizes or uh, encourages at least the use of this US EPA regulatory model such as AirScreen and AirMod. So if you want to run air pollution dispersion mod, air quality modeling studies, if you mention AirMod, then you would know what, what it is. Or oh, they recommend you to use AirMod. Now this is the Gaussian plume model. Just, just walk through it very, uh, <coughs> very uh, quickly or, or very slowly actually because I do want to explain part by part because there's a lot, there's a lot of things to this model, to this uh, diagram. So we need to go through it one by one. So here is the Y and X coordinate or axis, where X is the longitudinal axis or along the wind axis. The Y plus Y and plus negative Y is the lateral axis. You notice that this Y and X axis is um, aligned with the center of the plume that gets emitted from the stack. So this X and Y axis change depending on uh, where the plume travels. In the middle of this plume is the X axis and anything that's uh, 90 degrees to the middle of the plume is the Y axis. It means it's not a fixed axis for this diagram at least. And this is the stack and HS is the stack height. Uh, this is the Z coordinate, the, the, the height coordinate from the surface. And this is the plume. And as it goes downwind, it gets dispersed. And that's why it becomes wider and wider. Now, here the concentration will be high because it's at one point. But as it goes downwind, it gets spread out. The concentration at this point will be lower than this point. Okay, And we call this entire thing plume. So at this point, uh, the concentration at X1 is uh, C1, concentration X2 is C2, and so on, C3. But this refers to the middle. But we can also calculate the concentration at this point and this point or this point, depending on the coordinate of the X and Y. The uh, pollutant concentration profile, or the range, or the, the values of pollutant concentration for a cross-section of the plume is like so. Means that right in the middle, the concentration is high, but somewhere at the edge, it's lower. And it follows this Gaussian distribution or normal distribution. So that's why it's called the Gaussian plume model. So coming back, HS is the actual stack height or the height of the stack. HE is the effective stack height, means the height of the stack plus um, any height that's added because of the emission of the gas. When it re gets released from the stack, it has a certain velocity to it, so it will carry the plume slightly above. So there is a stack height, uh, increase in stack height, effective stack height because of this ejection into the air. Uh, so the actual effective stack height would be the actual stack height plus the delta H, so how much of it is actually moves up before it goes downwind. So this delta H is called the plume rise. Uh, 